Hello, Mr. Kevin J. Briggs. How are you doing? I'm it's fine. How are you, Elisa? Very good. I'm so excited about having this interview and learning so much from you. But first, I want to read your biography, which I think is awesome. God, talk about accolades, dude. Woo. Kevin J. Briggs, J for James, there will be a pop quiz after, is an author and specializes in consciousness and the connection to ETs and UFOs. His recently published book, get a pen and paper, guys, or you can re listen to this, so, is titled Spiritual Consciousness, A Personal Journey. And this book covers 56 years. God, so it happened since birth then, huh? No, I'm 65 now. I was, oh, uh... I was trying to give you something, dude. <laughs> it covers 56 years of his experiences of ET contact and UFO connections. Kevin speaks to many groups of U UFO and ET enthusiasts. They are always eager, I bet. They're an eager bunch, yeah. They're always <laughs> eager to hear of his interactions. He always receives a warm reception. Kevin has written articles, lots of them, which have been published in The Truth magazine. His published book was also mentioned in Psychic News in the UK in their editor's Goodreads section. He has also written an article about his ET experiences, which have been published in the New Observations magazine. Kevin has also appeared on the local radio stations and recently filmed for a TV show called Unlocking Your Limitless Life, hosted by Susan Schatzer and produced by Robin C. Adams. <clears throat> Kevin was a keynote speaker last September at the Miami Free Consciousness and Contact Experiencer Conference, hosted by the Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrials <clears throat> and Extraordinary Experiences. I will put this at the end, too, but if you want to get your pen and paper, I want you all to check out his website, KevinJamesBriggs.com, K-E-V-I-N-J-A-M-E-S-B-R-I-G-G-S.com. Oh, wow. I did that faster than I usually would. Uh, okay, so. Well, okay, I'd, like I, thank I, you for that. I'd like to thank you for that introduction. Sure. Say, I've only been speaking for about 18 months, but uh, there's quite a lot of history there now. So, uh, again, I'd like to thank you for inviting me on your show. It, without people like yourself, I, I can't get my message out. So I do appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And we want you on the radio show, too. That'd be fun. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, but no, it's our honor. I mean, you know, I, I have to have one confession though i have this secret fear that i'm going to be laying in bed and then i'll open my eyes and it'll be two little gray small grays by my bed it just sounds, seems creepy yeah i suppose it does really um yeah. i have i have many contacts over those 57, 57 years now actually wow. and uh uh i've i've seen the grays i've interacted oh. with them i've seen the uh uh, the Arcturians, and I've seen a, a group of eight ET ambassadors, which I've had contact with all my life. Oh, so, gosh. Uh, uh, quite an extensive, extensive yeah. contact, really. And well, let's it, talk about it, the first one. You want to you uh, share the very beginning, your first contact? I can do, yes. Well, uh, really, <clears throat> I suppose really the, the thread of the contact that they've given me is one of consciousness itself and understanding consciousness. That's the key to their education uh for me personally and uh, uh, i suppose my education started when i was eight but before that when i was three uh, my mother then engaged a uh, photographer to take some photographs for the family album uh, we were duly washed had a hair comb and oh. i was lifted up onto an oak table uh, for an elevated position so the photographer could get a, a better photograph and from that elevated position i looked around the room and i uh, knew I was conscious again, conscious in a physical body. And uh, that was my first rec recollection of being conscious in this particular uh, uh, physical body. I remember telling my wife that story, and she said, many years ago, and she said, Kevin, uh, three year olds don't use words like consciousness, and three year olds don't understand it. I said, well, I do what I did. <laughs> wow. So tell me about what, what that really means consciousness in your physical body like you actually as a three-year-old said i'm 
sentient energy, like in this body, I am conscious of who I am, where I am, etc. Is that it? That was it, really, I suppose, yes. Understanding that uh, uh, there are two sides to us, the physical side and the spiritual side. And the spiritual wow. side is conscious, consciousness itself and the yeah. conscious energy. And uh, I'm aware that uh, if we do reincarnate. I've got two previous lives that I remember, and uh, or parts of them that I remember. And uh, um, we we do come round again if we choose to come round again. And obviously, from a, a very early age, you if you have access to this knowledge and some understanding, uh, you can access it from that very early age. But I that yeah. was my own first recollection. But my second one would be. Uh, when my two guys came to me when I was eight years old, just five years later, I was taking a weekly bath, which we did in those days. I'm not quite sure how hygienic that was. The rest <laughs> of the time we were sponged down with soap and water. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was taking my weekly bath and I felt a change in vibration in the in the room. And, uh, uh, I, and a, a slight drop in temperature as well. And I looked to my right and two beings appeared. Uh, what did they look like? They were uh, tall, uh, both had long blonde hair, shoulder length, very attractive, deep blue eyes, wearing a tight-fitting blue jumpsuit type garment. And they were speaking to one another telepathically, which I could understand. Oh, wow. What was so it that was... you understood? Was it in your language or was it not a language? No, it was in, uh, well, I understood it in English as it were, so, oh. uh, but I, it frightened me to death, Elisa. I must admit, I was terrified by it. Oh. These two beings in the room. Oh, uh, but I remember some of the conversation. I know these two guys now have been in contact with them all my life. Uh, their names are Ort, O R T, and D, D E E. D is a female, Ort is a male. Both are actual in there, tell me. Both oh. are fifth dimensional, they tell me. Mm. And uh, and they inform me that I'm part of their extended family. Only my physical is in the third dimension, yeah. and their physical is in the fifth dimension. But okay. I'm part of their extended family. So, yeah. uh, uh, but the the conversation that I remember, bearing in mind I was terrified, uh, um, the uh, D, the female, said, "Is this the boy?" And I Art said, "Yes, this is the boy." And then she questioned him, said, "Are you sure this is the boy? Look at him; he's very small." He's frightened. He's uneducated, and she was correct. I was, I was terrified. Oh. And uh, he said, "No, this is a boy. I will guide him. I will teach him." There was some other conversation within that, uh, and then they left. I was so frightened. I didn't get out of the bath. The water went cold. I was shivering. Uh, my mother came in to see why I was still in the bath, and I explained about the two beings. And she said, "Oh, it's just your imagination." And she dragged me off. And we went about our evening, but uh, it wasn't my imagination. They were real, and uh, uh, I still contact with them today. Wow, so that's interesting. Then what happened after that? When was your, like, third meeting? Okay, the next uh, encounter would be I was nine, and uh, <clears throat> um, I'd had some friends around. We'd been playing in the house. My friends left, and I showed them out the back door. And then uh, I came back into the house and I could feel a vibrational frequency in the home. And uh, um, nothing unusual for me. I'm sensitive to these higher vibrational frequencies I'd, from a child, very young age. And uh, so I looked around the house to see if I could see anybody. Uh, and I went upstairs, went back into the kitchen, back into the living room, living room where the, the, the feeling of the vibrational frequency was the strongest. And I looked behind the, the curtains, or the drapes, as we say here, and there was this orange orb, and it was about four to six inch in diameter. It was slightly vibrating. Uh, it was, uh, um, as I said, orange in color, slightly vibrating, but uh, there was no communication with it. In fact, I was a little concerned because I thought I'd invited it into the home, and if my mother saw it, I would be chastised for doing that. Uh -huh. but, uh, I don't, Anyway, there was no communication, but the orb stayed uh, until the following, it was a Sunday when it appeared, it stayed until the following Friday. And uh, I came in from school at about four o'clock on that Friday. I opened the back door and I realized that the orb had disappeared. There was that vibrational frequency wasn't there in the home anymore. And I was quite pleased about that because I didn't know what it was or what it yeah. was doing there. 
So I was quite relieved by that. But, but then after that, uh, my psychic abilities had been enhanced no end uh, to the point where I could actually separate my physical from my consciousness and use, uh, I only used it in a simplistic form at that time, to go and travel. Oh, I'm able fun. to, if I, yeah, if I relax, open my mind, I can uh, move my consciousness out and it can go and travel. And I used to go and do that for, for weekends, really, and go and visit my grandparents who lived 70 miles away in Liverpool. And uh, I would uh, uh, come into their home, I would go upstairs, and there was a, uh, the master bedroom was up there. It had a, uh, a dressing room, so I would sit in that dressing room looking down through the floor, which was opaque, and uh, I could see my grandmother, usually in the kitchen on a Sunday, cooking Sunday dinner, and my uh, grandfather either reading the newspaper or watching the TV. And I used to do that for many years as a child. It gave me great comfort. We, weren't, we didn't have a great deal of money. We weren't able to go and see them as often as I would have liked. Yeah. So I used this out-of-body travelling uh, to, to visit them. But I always wondered when I was sat there, what would they see if they came upstairs? Uh, and now I know what they would have seen. They would have seen a small orange, yellowy orb, slightly vibrating. They would, they would be able to see it? Pardon? They would be able to see the orange? Yes, yes. And that's, oh. I realized that the uh, yellow orange orb that I saw behind the curtain, I know later, I was told later, that that was uh, orcs pure conscious energy oh all right so um i was gonna ask you it was so important now oh, go ahead uh, go on because uh, well wait 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 oh yeah i know what it was were you able to tell your parents hey you know yesterday grandma you know uh, was cooking such and such and like what how do you know no i didn't do that in fact i didn't converse with anybody about it I oh, thought yeah. it was just. I thought it was just a a, a normal part of who we are. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, you know, one of your senses. You know, sight, sound, taste, hearing. So you um, thought everybody so was like that. Everybody, everybody was like that. Wow. So I never discussed it. I, I and it, it wasn't until I got to sixteen, seventeen ish, and I thought, well, nobody talks about this, so uh, I uh, I'll have to ask. So I asked all my friends, and uh, in a third party. I would say I've got a friend of mine who was oh. able to, who was able to uh, uh, leave his body, separate his consciousness, and go and travel outside of his body. Uh, do, you, do you have any friends that can do that? And they all came back, no, 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 no. Uh, so I just then accepted it that that's who I was. But then I asked Art himself. I realized that there was more information out there. There was much more to learn. So I asked him directly. And uh, he, on, on this first occasion, I'd say I'd be about 17. I know the location where it happened, I haven't got the exact date, but uh, I know where I was. And uh, I, I went to bed that night and I relaxed. I opened my mind as I would do if I was traveling myself. I held my hand out and I asked my uh, uh, art, my guide, uh, would he come and show me some more? He came, he took hold of my hand. I left my body, which not unusual for me. But so no, it was a, a your, wasn't your physical hand, it was your... Yeah, it was my conscious oh, energy, gotcha. okay, ah. which would be my hand in my physical. But yeah. he came and took hold of my hand, I left my body, I looked down, I could see my body asleep. We then left through the window, the two of us, we went round, the, flew around the subdivision, the estate as it were, and then we came back into the window. I could see my body asleep, and uh, I went back in my body. I woke up in the morning and I thought, well, that was cool. Uh, but I wasn't certain whether I was dreaming or sleepwalking. Oh, it was just my imagination. So the following evening, I thought, well, I'll try that again. So again, I opened my mind. I relaxed. I held my hand out. I asked Ork to come and show me some more. He came again. He took hold of my hand. We left through the window again, bearing in mind we're three stories old. And then we flew down into Leeds city center. And, uh, I recognized the buildings there, the hospital, the university where I worked at the time, uh, the town hall, and the vibrant town center of Leeds City. We then flew back to my apartment, in through the window. I could see my body asleep. I went back into my body, and uh, I woke up the following morning, 
And uh, I'm still not certain whether I'm dreaming, but I'm obviously fascinated by it. So the so third was, night, was, I thought... Was, the, was this the first time you actually spoke to Ort? The very first time that you held out your hand? It would be, yes. Okay, it would okay. be because the, yeah. the, the, yes, it would be. That's the first time that I've actually asked for help or asked okay. for more knowledge. So, Got uh, it. So on the, th on the third time, he came again. Uh, exactly the same process. I relaxed, opened my mind, held out my hand. And I, uh, I said to him, yeah, I, I'm still not certain whether I'm dreaming, whether I'm sleepwalking. Instead of going out through the window because we're three stories up and it's concrete pavement below, can we go out through the roof? So we went out through the roof. Uh, we flew around and came back in through the roof. And then our subsequent journeys with him, we left through the roof. Wow, interesting. Why do you think you were chosen? Why was, was well, that boy? Are you I, sure? I don't think I, I don't think I was chosen. I think what happened, and, and they haven't told me this. I've learned this from other people who uh, have uh, a spiritual understanding of these things, and I'm informed by them that uh, we choose to come into this physical. We know what life we're going to have, yeah. the ups and downs, the uh, uh, of, of regular physical life. Sure. So I, I believe I chose myself to come in and do this. Um, oh, I see. And that, but I've been given that uh, as direct information or confirmation. That's just my own understanding from speaking with other spiritual people. So. Well, have you asked Ort or Dees, like, hey, why were y'all having that conversation? Like, are you sure this is the boy, the boy? No, I haven't done that. I've, uh, uh, I haven't asked too many questions. And I was... Uh, speaking to Helen Swain a few weeks ago, and she was saying, Kevin, you just don't ask questions. You just accept what they're telling you. And, and I did. I was a bit of a sponge, really. Um, and, and like I say, I didn't speak with anybody else about it because I was just, uh, uh, I just en enjoyed the, the traveling. And then yeah. I know on one occasion, Ork came to me. I was asleep. And uh, he said, Kevin, I'm going to take you somewhere uh, special tonight. Will you go with me? I said, yes, I'll go with you. I'll go anywhere you want to go. Uh, I'm happy. And, and I took hold of my hand. I left my body. I could see my body fast asleep. And uh, we went out through the roof, the uh, normal mode of exit from the house, as it were. And we were, continued to go up and up and up and up. And I could see the earth getting smaller Ooh. and smaller and smaller. Wow. And, and so it almost just disappeared. And then um, we, I, I always say we took a right hand turn, but I believe now that we went into a higher dimension. Oh. As we entered that dimension, there was a line of 30 people. At the front of the line was my deceased father, and oh, he wow. was stood up. Yeah. I'd never seen him standing because he'd always been in a wheelchair from when I was born. Oh, wow. And, and he, died, he died when I was nine. Mm. Uh, so to see him was just tremendous. Oh. And there's a line, as I say, of 30 people. And the love that emanated from that group of people was just tremendous. I've never felt that feeling of love before between yeah. uh, what I now know are my family members. Oh. Anyway, my father says, I'm going to introduce you to 30 members of your family going back 300 years. Oh. So we, we started down the line of the family. And the first 15 had a physical form that I could see. Mm. I interacted with them telepathically. And then the second 15 were all pure conscious energy orbs. The oh. orangey yellow in color slightly vibrated. I was still able to communicate with them telepathically. And uh, they, were, they showed me uh, their last incarnation, what they looked like in the physical. Cool. So that was an amazing experience. And then I used to go and visit them on a regular basis uh, with art. And then I got so confident in my own ability, I could go and visit them myself. That's and what I, I was going to ask you. Did you always oh, right. support? Wow. So you could eventually go there yourself. Yes. And I did that for a period of two years. Um, and I would go and visit them. And again, this tremendous feeling of love uh, mm. when I met with them. But they always wanted me to stay with them. And yeah. it was always a battle to leave. Oh. I said, no, oh, I have to leave. Yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying my physical at this moment in time. I've got things that I need to do, things that I want to do. Yes. Um, and I said, uh, you know, I can come and visit you when I want. So I did. 
But then, as I say, after a two-year period, I decided that uh, uh, I don't really need to go back and see them anymore, uh, but I have to go back and tell them that I'm not coming. So on oh. that evening, I went up to see them. I spoke to them. Again, that tremendous feeling of love. And they didn't want me to leave. But I said, I'm sure if I don't leave, my physical will die again. And I've got things I need to do. So I won't be coming back to see you again until my physical expires. But I know that you are here and I will come and rejoin the family uh, at that time. Yeah. Um, so I left and uh, I've never been back <clears throat> since. But I know they're there if I should need them, if I need to communicate with them. And I will meet them again. And I'm looking forward to receiving that love when my physical does die and I do pass over. That is so incredible. Uh, did you ever go to um, other planets with Ort? Or, I or, or you, UFO, I mean, um, motherships? Uh, or? Uh, a couple of examples. I could, many of the um, abilities that they're given me uh, are, as I say, with consciousness itself. And consciousness can be used for uh, travel, for communication, for creation itself. In mm -hmm. fact, we really create our own reality using conscious energy, exactly. thought energy. We live in a holographic universe yep. and we project and the, the, uh, our brain is a receptor uh, and that's how we uh, enjoy and feel the physical as it were. Yes. But if you are able to travel outside and separate your consciousness from the physical that you're projecting, and actually project your consciousness itself onto the higher planes. And uh, I was able to uh, astral travel, just leave my body and uh, go and travel on the astral plane. Mm -hmm. And on one occasion, I would meet Art D on this plane and we would have discussions and chats and things. But on this one occasion, they came alongside me with a, uh, a craft and uh, they invited me on board and said that uh, they had a message for someone that uh, they would like me to convey. I said, yes, I can convey the message. But as I went on to the craft, the craft itself had a conscious skin. And inside the craft, I saw Orton D as pure conscious energy orbs. Again, oh. yellow, orange in color. And I asked them, how do you see me? And they said, oh, we see you in the same way, Kevin. Uh, orange, uh, yellow in color conscious energy orb. So I said to them, let me see if I understand this then. We are traveling on the astral plane as uh, different species, um, or even the same species possibly, I'm not quite certain, and uh, on a conscious craft. Uh, and he says, yes, that's correct. Uh, I said, oh, right, okay, that's amazing. Anyway, they gave me the, they gave me the information. And uh, I did convey the message to a third party and what, what was quite strange that though, I, uh, I asked them, who shall I say the message is from? Oh. They, said, they said, tell uh, him it's the light beams. Now I hadn't heard oh. that term before, but yeah. I, I thought they would have said, just say it's O and D. Anyway, I managed to uh, convey the message by a third party and I got a response. Uh, from the person who the message was for. He thanked me for the message, said he would take it under consideration, and then he sent a photograph he had taken while out in the field of a light being. Oh. And that was confirmation for me. That oh. That's why they use that term, light being. So, uh, yeah. uh, so that was one occasion in traveling outside uh, of your body, uh, meeting with uh, the on the astral plane, just really using consciousness itself. A, yeah. they they use consciousness consciousness to create that craft, and then we were both using consciousness wow. to travel, and then conscious energy for communication. So, well, that's um, amazing. Do you, do you have a the picture of that? Uh, of I do have it. Oh, I'd love to see that eventually. But well, I was obviously putting it out there on, on, on the internet and things. So oh, it, yeah, it, yeah. It is out there, yeah. But I think I've got the original one that you sent me here somewhere. I've that many things on my computer now. So, uh, uh, I know, I know. <laughs> so um, if you could uh, travel geographically. Could you, could you travel across time? Time back? No, I haven't course? tried that. That's a big old question. I haven't tried that. Um, I know I can travel... Uh, uh, anywhere I want to go, but oh, I'm not certain. Wow. I haven't explored that yet. Uh, I don't think I have any need to, 
I could ask and try. Yeah. I know that I know on one occasion I was speaking with them on the astral plane, and Ark said to me, uh, and again we're in his conscious craft, and he said to me, Kevin, why don't you uh, travel further than just the astral plane? I said, Well, I said it's okay for you. you there's Ark and D. There's a two of you. You've got a companion. You've got a conscious craft to travel in. I said, Oh, you know, I can't build a craft like this. And he said, uh, yes, you can. Yeah. How would I do that? He said, by thought and using conscious energy. Well, so do you, why do you need a craft, though? Why do you need a craft? I, do, I think the reason they gave me that information, it was another lesson. A, you know, you don't need a craft, you're quite right. Oh. But the lesson was, can oh, you see. create using thought and consciousness? Yes. Can you create a conscious craft? And yes, I tried it. Yes. I was able to do it and yes wow. I was able to travel to uh, the first time I did it I was traveling and I had a small window in the craft and the I thought the stars were going past me at a great beam and when I looked closely they weren't stars they were galaxies going past oh, at wow. a tremendous speed so then that frightened me so I ceased the um, process as it were the yeah. whatever I was doing I see and then I came back and then I yeah. thought, right, well, I really need to know what I'm doing. So I need a navigation system. I need to know where I'm going. So I need to na uh, plan a route. Yeah. So I did that. I consciously uh, designed it. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, really. A, no. a thought process in navigation system. Yes, a, of uh, course. A Furuno, Magellan. And then, I, and then I looked at these some star charts and thought, right, I will go to Andromeda. And the reason why I chose that that was because Orton D um, uh, came from there. Oh. So on that evening, I, I did just that. I created this craft by thought, and uh, I went to Andromeda. I'd already got the uh, navigation system pre-planned, uh, using thought again, and off I went. And uh, it was just an amazing trip. And I came to a blue planet. I circled the planet in my own conscious craft, and I had a thought then, I thought, if I went down through the clouds now and that planet was inhabited, would they think I was a UFO? Would they oh, think I yeah. was a, an extraterrestrial, possibly? Uh, so that was quite interesting. Anyway, I came back and, uh, um, and then on uh, one other occasion, I used the, uh, uh, that mode of tra transport again. And, and you are quite correct. You don't need a craft to travel if you're using consciousness. But that was a lesson for me uh, guiding me and teaching me in, in creation relation, the, yeah. in relation to creation and consciousness and what it can be used for so what did... I remember on oh, one occasion on one occasion I was um, uh, there's a group of eight extraterrestrials eight mm -hmm. ambassadors that I've met uh, from the age of 14 and uh, uh, I interact with them on a regular basis and a few months ago now I was unable to actually uh, make contact with them. And I felt it quite strange, but I felt quite lonely because I wasn't able to contact them. And I oh. thought, I'll, I'll know what to do. I will uh, build myself a conscious craft and I'll go looking for them. Oh, so, wow. So that's what I did. I went and I searched all over. I went out to Andromeda. I went all over the galaxies and I couldn't find them at all. And uh, so I went back into uh, my body, as it were, um, and I woke up, and as I woke up, all eight of the eight AT, AT ambassadors appeared in my room, slightly wow. above me. And uh, I said, I've been looking for you. Where have you been? They said, yes, we know, Kevin. That's why we're here. And what that was teaching me was the fact that um, it was the last lesson in relation to using thought using consciousness to travel, to create for communication. Uh, they never sat me down in the classroom and said, Kevin, learn this. They gave me experiences. Oh, of and, course. Uh, That's the best way to learn. So what did the <coughs> your craft look like inside and out? I mean, just... Okay, just outside, it was just a circular <coughs> bubble with okay. a, a large window at the front. And then the uh, controls were just thought in face controls yeah so I would just think what i wanted to do i want to go here i want to go there 
Uh, I well, look, were they the like throttles? And no, there were no throttles or anything. Okay. All just done by thought. Oh, uh, cool. But, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> very difficult to explain to people. I'm sure a lot of people think I'm delusional, but uh, by the time oh, of life... Oh, I know you're not. <laughs> by the time of life, it doesn't really matter. In fact, I wouldn't have spoken out about any of my experiences had it not been for three years ago. Yeah. Uh, I got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I came back. I was about to snuggle down into bed. And uh, uh, there was a bright light outside the window. The light came in through the bedroom window, lit up the whole room with a myriad of butterflies, or what looked like a myriad wow. of butterflies. Yeah. But it was just pure light energy. And then off and D materialized at the bottom of the bed. And as I say, I'm used to meeting with them, interacting with them. So after pleasantries and greetings, I asked what was the reason for their uh, visit. And they said, Kevin, we would like you to talk about your interactions with us. And we would like to, you to write about your interactions with us. And I remember saying, I, uh, I don't mind talking about them, but I'm not a writer. And they said, we will continue to guide you. We will continue to teach you. And we will give you information to include in the book. In fact, Kevin, you will write two books. And, uh, and then uh, with some other words, and then, then they left. The following morning, I started writing my book, uh, Spiritual Consciousness, A Personal Journey. And it was published 18 months ago. Oh, my. And, and I'm surprised at the interest. I'm really, really surprised at the interest. But I now realize there's a whole section of humanity who have an understanding of these things. Yeah. But because we don't speak out about them, people don't talk about it. So, yeah, we're now, afraid that they might not think we're crazy, just like you said. You exactly. Know, I, yes. Uh, if, if I say this to uh, uh, some of my friends, although I, I do, I speak openly about it. I'm quite open and quite confident in the abilities. And I think it's important that I do. They have given me this message to get out there, uh, and that's what I'm doing. Uh, and with 18 months of speaking, having I mean, the book being published and speaking, I'm just surprised. But uh, it's changed my life. It's, it's enhanced it even more. It's just an amazing experience for me, uh, and I'm very grateful for them for sharing their knowledge with me. Oh, I can imagine. How old are they? I mean, do you? what's the last time you talked to them? Are okay. they immortal? Well, or? well no, or? no. They... they they did tell me, oh, D, they lived to 300 years. But I, I, when I see them, they, they haven't changed one bit from when I was eight to now. You know, wow. when they asked me to write the book and they materialized at the bottom of my bed, that was just three years ago. And they looked exactly the same. I they think that's age. That, well, they, they, they haven't aged, no. They no, create the their physical. The same. No, no, yeah, they create the their physical the way they were thought, right? The, the, they want to create it as a stable thing. Yeah, so, that's yeah. Cool. so uh, I don't, they did tell me they lived 300 years, as I think I've said, but uh, um, if they did, then they would show some signs of aging. So they don't. Not, I guess not necessarily. No. I no. mean, there, there are life forms here that don't seem to age. They just die. Um, yeah. When's the last time you talked to them? Uh, that would be, oh, I, I speak to them regular. Um, oh, good, they, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's an ongoing event. In fact, I spoke to them this morning. I asked them something. Uh, I asked them to confirm something. And uh, uh, I've asked them to uh, show a, um, a mass sighting on the 12th of December over North Carolina uh, as confirmation that I am also in direct contact yeah. with this group of uh, yeah. uh, ATTs. So I spoke to them and they confirmed it again this morning that they will do that. So I'm happy to do that. But I had my own confirmation of a sighting in, uh, I was in New York yes. uh, a few months ago with my wife on a vacation. And uh, we, uh, I was just reading a post by a Dr. Joseph Burt, who was uh, on the board of the Free Foundation, I believe. And uh, uh, his post was about experiences like myself who had a dream of um, craft appearing over major cities globally. Well, I've had that dream three times in my life. So I, I replied to the post, put the post on there, and I put my phone down. And the hotel we had in Manhattan, uh, we could see the there's two large skyscrapers, and then you could see the tops of the trees for Central Park. As wow. I looked out of the window, 
15 craft appeared. Uh, they appeared, they formed a pattern, they then disappeared, reappeared and formed another pattern. And to me, that was a precursor to a major reveal that yeah. they've given me for the 1st of February in 2020 at, in New York. So oh. um, I'm, I'm very confident and I now really understand the reason for this whole education uh, and understanding of consciousness is to be a conduit for communication to them. Yeah, <clears throat> but too bad we can't get over. And you know, it's kind of like we're in the same spot that we were in when everyone thought the, the, the earth was flat. And then somebody, yeah. who was it, Galileo, I think. Yeah, Galileo and, wanted the infinity. Yeah, I said, no, no. Years, it, I think, it? Yeah, yeah, it's, no, no, it's, you know, it's round, you know. And, you know, they, didn't he get thrown in jail or something? I mean. <laughs> yeah, he did for 15 years. It oh, that's what you just said. Oh, yeah. Home arrest for 15 years. Oh. And then after 15 years, he relented. Uh, I think just to come out of his home, really. Of course. But that's the, uh, the power of society. They don't want change. And well, my, yeah. I suppose my uh, information now is as bizarre as the earth being round when everybody knew it was flat. So I know. I know. And it's, yeah. Well, I love the, to give the skeptics, I like to talk about that. But I never try to convert anybody, only if they ask me. Anything. No, no, you can't but do I, that. No. Uh, but anyway, no, so. Impossible. Yeah. So I, I give them uh, Arthur Schopenhauer's quote. Truth goes through three phases. First, it's ridiculed, then it's scorned, but eventually it's accepted as self-evident. And, you know, oh, that's... I, like that. I love I like that. that. That's very good. Yeah. And also, there's one by Thomas Campbell, who wrote my big TOE, Theory of Everything. He says that we are kind of like our intestinal bacteria. For all we know, the bread that comes down to us is manna from heaven. We have no idea that crops have to be, uh, seeds have to be planted, crops grown, irrigated, crop rotation. We don't know about the, taking it to the miller or distributing the, the bread, the global economics of wheat. Yet, it's still out there. And yeah. so, you know, we just because we don't see it and can't touch it, feel and yeah, so perceive it with our... Yeah. Who created the seed that allows us to plant the crop? Yeah. That's all, that's it, yeah. yeah. So that would be through thought and consciousness. And so that's I'm right. Sure. That's so cool. Wow. Uh, let me see. I was it's, scribbling questions it's funny here. That, it's uh, funny that you mentioned the theory of everything. Yeah. Because uh, I was given a, I've, I've been given a few downloads over the years. And on this mm -hmm. particular, now you mentioned the theory of everything. I'll, I'll explain what happened. I was sat by my pool. And uh, I, uh, I got this download. A download is information that comes into the brain in an instant, and you have an understanding of it. Wow. And the, I the, could have used the, that in medical school. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the, the download was, uh, uh, the, this, it was about the theory of everything you've just mentioned. Oh. And they said to me, and bear, bearing in mind, I knew nothing about this at the time. Uh, they said, Kevin, uh, your scientist's understanding of the theory of everything is correct. Mm. Their understanding of uh, non-locality, duality, entanglement, entanglement is correct. However, they need to include uh, consciousness in their calculations mm. as there's a measurement problem. And the measurement problem relates to space, time and dimension. If they include C consciousness as a constant within their equation, it will solve that problem. And uh, when I got that information, I'm thinking, and then they went a little bit further and they said that the non-locality and duality is correct, but the entanglement is the entanglement of consciousness itself. And it's wow. that entanglement of consciousness that allows you to communicate with us, that allows yeah. you to travel, that allows you to create. Uh, oh, and awesome. when your scientists understand that, they will have a better understanding of the uh, theory of everything. So then I asked for, I can't remember if it was this occasion or the other one, but uh, I asked them to show me a craft as confirmation that I'm not just imagining the information. And on one occasion when I had a download uh, and I asked for confirmation, uh, a craft appeared. I went inside to get my wife to say, Sandy, can you come outside? There's a, a UFO. She came out. A second one appeared, a third one seven in total, flew wow. silently over our heads uh, and disappeared uh, 
off, moved off the 80 degree angle, disappeared sequentially as they had appeared. On another download, I asked for confirmation and one craft appeared and it flashed one, two, three times and disappeared. So that's confirmation that the downloads are coming from them and it's yeah. not my imagination. So and your I wife saw them too, right? Exactly. Oh, she saw them, yes. yes. Wow. They, they show them to my wife now. In fact, my wife got a, a photograph of one under a rainbow, which was quite interesting. I was actually, uh, my wife had gone up, she'd fed the dogs, and we usually sit outside and have a, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. My wife was sat there, I was getting dressed, and I thought, oh, I'll just see if I can contact uh, my group of eight. And I wasn't able to, but I contacted a, a small craft which had contained uh, six or seven, five or six, seven uh, small greys. And oh. the guy that was piloting the craft, his name is Tia, I've met him before. So I asked him, I said, what are you doing here? He said, well, we were in the area, but we've deviated off our course and we came to see where you lived. I said, that's cool. So we had a bit of our conversation. And then he said, right, we'll have to go because, as I said, we're off our designated course. So they disappeared. Oh. Nothing unusual for me at all. Uh -uh. However, when I came to get my coffee and sit down with my wife by the pool, my wife said to me, Kevin, you missed the most beautiful rainbow this morning. And we have five acres at the back of the house there. And the rainbow went from one fence line all the way around to the other fence line, touching the ground. Wow. I, and she said, yes, I've got a photograph of it. So that's great. But she said, then a UFO appeared under the rainbow. I was oh. taking a photograph of the rainbow. So... Uh, I said, did he get photographs? She said, yes, he did. So she showed me the photographs. But then when we looked at the time on the photograph, it was 8.30. That was the time when I was speaking to Tia in the craft with oh, five or six. Interesting. So that would be confirmation for me through Sandy that the craft was there. Now, the photograph is a little blurred on the craft itself. And I think she got three. She got the before the craft and after, all within a period of a split second, as it were. Mm. And, uh, but when she saw it, it was a clear metallic disc. Um, wow. So they, they, they are in contact, and they're in contact with many. Now I'm speaking oh, yeah. to that. People so, contact me all over. You know, are, the so. small grace, are the small grace supposed to be mean? Well, the ones that I've met, they're not. But I am informed there are some that can be malevolent. But... Uh, okay. um, I haven't met any of the, the, all the ones I've met to be very friendly. Yeah, I remember um, I was in New Braun Braunfels with my, some of my girlfriends, and we decided to take uh, a bunch of blankets and lay down in this field and sort of look for UFOs, and we conjured them up. I mean, it was like, okay, we want to see you guys. We want to see a UFO. And then there was this light above us in the distance, coming slowly and it was weird looking i can't remember and then it stopped and then it whoosh, went to the side like no normal craft would do that so that was cool well that's what you say you can initiate i thought which yeah. you did, to ask them to show themselves and they do uh, not always but uh, well that's why i've asked them to show themselves in north carolina on uh, december yeah. the 12th uh, mm -hmm. uh mass sighting so that oh, wow. uh, people realize that you can do that. You've had your own experience with that with your friends for one craft. I've had that uh, several times for myself. I asked her to show a craft for a friend of mine who was staying with me from the UK. He's been a skeptic all his life. Always thinks I'm a bit of a nutter, I think. But, uh, but we're still very good friends. And I went to the fridge. To, well, there were him, his wife, my wife, sat by the pool. I went to the fridge to get a beer uh, for the two of us. And as I opened the fridge, I said to them, now will be time to show a craft, obviously for my friend. I came back with a beer and a craft appeared immediately. All four, saw, four of us saw it and it changed him his whole life from being a skeptic <sighs> to uh, uh, having a better understanding. And then they went further than that. There was a blood red moon and his wife was taking a photograph at the front of our house. It would just come up above the horizon. And when they looked at the photograph, there was five orbs on there, five beautiful orbs, wow. very clear, very large. Uh, and now, and then he had an out-of-body experience. So now, the a who changed did? man. Oh, oh, he did? He did, yes. So, so was he scared he at first? Was he frightened when he saw the, the craft? It, 
uh, he wasn't frightened by the craft. He was shocked, shall we say. Oh. He didn't believe what he'd seen. And then he looked <sighs> across to everybody else for confirmation. And we all saw it quite clearly. So, um, bear in mind, Sandy and I are used to seeing them anyway. So yeah. uh, we encourage them. We enjoy the interaction, I suppose. Do you have any of the photographs on your website? I don't think I have the one of the rainbow, no. I or so many. For the one of the moon. I'll have to ask him again because it's a beautiful photograph. Oh. It's just of the moon itself. But yeah. to have those five orbs there, uh, just a tremendous, a tremendous photograph. So, oh, that's awesome. Uh, I'll have to ask him again. I don't have a copy of that one, but uh, he has somewhere. So I'll ask him for that. So, But the, okay. I can send you the copy of the rainbow with the craft underneath it. If you, okay. I can, That'd be awesome. It yeah. It's, uh, it's quite interesting. In fact, the, the rainbow itself, I've, seen, I've learned since then, I met a lady who had a similar experience where a, a rainbow appeared and the craft appeared on the outside of the rainbow. Uh, wow. And then I've met another lady called Betty. And she was at a friend's house and she's got a, a similar photograph with a rainbow with a craft underneath. So clearly they use what, what's that. The, yeah, what, what's, the, what's the deal with the rainbow? I think that's just to attract your attention. Oh, you yeah. Think, how many people see a beautiful rainbow? Oh, let me get a photograph. You go to set the photograph and then the craft appears. That it's makes a, a modality sense. of contact, I think. Without people asking, they're given that information. That's cool. Okay, so when you're out of your body, I mean, is there a possibility to stay out too long? I mean, does anything happen to your body that's uh, harmful? Not that I'm aware or? of. I've had no mishaps or anything. Uh, I'm always able to get back, and uh, um, no, I've had no problems at all. They haven't given me any restrictions on anything like that, or warned me about that. I think we we all have the ability. We're just not taught how to use it, and it's in fact probably hidden from the fact that we are uh, really spiritual beings yeah. having a physical experiences. Where we're taught we're physical, and then you die and become a, a spirit. In reality, it's the other way around. I think. Yeah. So have you been able to see your spirit guides? Well, um, I, I'm able to, uh, I've seen many deceased friends, yeah. what we call deceased friends over the years, uh, friends that have died and they've come back to visit, um, uh, not to guide me, just to visit. Sometimes I have a message. Uh, I remember one friend, he died very, very suddenly. He was in his uh, mid fifties wow. and, uh, Obviously, we went to his funeral, and one evening I was watching the 11 o'clock news. Sandy had just gone to bed, and I thought, oh, I'll have a can of beer. So I went into the garage, uh, I opened up my fridge in there, but as I went into the garage, I could feel a, a change in the vibrational frequency in the garage. So I got my beer anyway, and I thought, I turned down, and I said, right, who's there? And my friend who had died about two weeks earlier. Oh, wow. He said, he said his name. And I said, oh, hi, how are you doing? So I actually sat down on a, a cooler I've got in the garage. And uh, I sat there for 20 minutes talking to him. And he, I asked him what the reason for his visit was. And he said, well, Kevin, I died so suddenly. And uh, I wanted to thank you uh, for uh, attending my funeral. It was very important to my family. It was very important to me. And... Uh, uh, and I just wanted to say goodbye. I know I will see you again later, but I wanted to say goodbye. And we had a conversation, and it was quite funny, really, because uh, I first met that particular friend. We moved to a new subdivision, and he came out, and he knocked on the door, and uh, we sat in the garage drinking a couple of beers. And, and our subsequent life together as neighbours, as it were, we yeah. used to go around to one another's house, he'd knock on her, Kevin, I've just come home from work, I need somebody to have a beer with, you know, so uh-huh. we'd sit in the garage and have a beer. And here I am, after his death, sat in my own garage, uh, speaking with him and drinking a, a beer, you know. I mean, it, it's, uh, um, but I know that he's only uh, gone up to that higher level of consciousness. He's still alive, yeah. he's still He's still living there. So exactly. and I, I remember another friend of mine, uh, she, she died of cancer. And uh, oh, I can't remember how old I was then, about 28, 30 years probably. And I remember, again, Sandy had gone to bed and uh, I felt the vibrational frequency change in the living room. And I felt uh, a female being uh, by the, uh, stood by the um, uh, fireplace. And there was a slight 
a vibrational frequency change as well. So you could see it, an outline of a person. Yeah. There was no communication. I felt she was very, um, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not frightened by what she's doing. She hadn't made contact before and she was a bit... Uh, uh, startled, maybe? Start, or perturbed about doing it, really. Oh. So she didn't communicate with me, but uh, I, uh, she left anyway. And then I told Sandy in the morning, so there's a spirit came last night. Uh, I don't know who it was. She was female, apprehensive. That's the word I was looking for. But she was very oh. apprehensive. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, I said, uh, perhaps she'll come back to tonight. Anyway, she did come back that evening. And uh, uh, I was pleased to hear from her and speak to her. Uh, but she wanted to pass a message on to her uh, husband, uh, when he was alive, but uh, at that time I didn't do those things, and I said to him, I'm sorry, I, I can't do that. I wasn't in a position to do that, I would have been yeah. ridiculed. I was a police officer in oh, the UK yeah, at the time, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I wasn't able to do that. But yeah. there was another reason why I didn't do it stood behind her to the top right with a line of people, all with these messages oh. for, their, for their family members. And I felt if I'd have said yes to my friend, it would have opened up a floodgate of people uh, wanting to convey messages. So it wasn't the right time for me to do that then. And I have had other messages uh, uh, that I have conveyed, uh, but I still find that quite difficult. I have a, a friend of mine that uh, I was just out with my dogs one uh, um, morning and it was a beautiful day. And I was just looking up and just feeling so grateful for just being alive yeah. uh, in such a beautiful place with the sunshine, just enjoying being, as it were. And I received this message from this person and he wanted me to contact a friend of his. And A, I didn't know the person the message was coming from. I won't mention his name. And I didn't know at that time the person the message was for. And, uh, wow, that makes and, it tough. Uh, it was tough. And I'm thinking, I don't know what to do. So I found a friend of mine, uh, Dr. Melanie Barton, and I asked her, and she said, well, Kevin, what's the reason why you don't want to convey the message? And I said, well, A, I don't know the, the man that's given me the message. I don't know the lady that the message is for. And uh, I feel that it's a very sensitive time. It's a personal time. And you don't want a complete stranger coming in and saying, I've spoken to your deceased friend. Yeah. And, and this is the message. But uh, I... I decided I would give her the message, and I gave her the message. And the message changed the course of her life. Oh. And she became, uh, it was a tremendous, and if you speak to her, she will tell you the exact story. But I don't know, because I don't share people's names usually. Yeah. I still think it's a very personal thing. Oh, of uh, but, course. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, so that the, the, there are occasions when I do do that. But as I'm sure you're aware, you know, our... Uh, higher conscious self is still alive and well and enjoying that uh, uh, being as it were exactly all right so before we close i just have a couple of questions uh how can people do number one be able to conjure up um people you know beings like orton d and number two how can they be open to perceive the energy of their of their deceased loved ones. Okay, well, if I tell you how, how I do it, I uh, if I'm wanting to travel on the astral plane, I relax, I open my mind. But my wife doesn't like that term, but she says, Kevin, I, I don't understand what opening your mind means. That's what I know. I, I can't explain it in any other way. So if I'm going to travel on the astral plane outside of the body, I will look inwards. Uh, I will continue to relax and look inwards, keep looking inwards, until I see an eye. And then when I see that eye, I then change direction and move forward and go through that eye. And when Ooh. I go through the eye, on the other side, it's a myriad of stars and things. That's when you're traveling on the astral plane. Now, if you want to contact your own spirit guides, and we all have them, they are guided, we just don't recognize the contact when they're knocking on the door, as it were, because we, we're not looking for that communication. But if you ask them, you are open-minded. If you ask them a question yourself, you say you have a dilemma. Uh, shall I do A? Shall I do B? And then something comes into your life. Say like a, a beautiful butterfly flying past at the time when you've asked that message. Uh, 
that will be confirmation or communication from the higher conscious beings. And if you open yourself up to that, and very often, I, I know when I was asked to write the book, the amount of friends that I have who came to me with their own stories, I've known them for since these American friends here uh, for 19 years and they've never mentioned it until I mentioned it and they've all got their own contact got uh, it's that, amazing but, people are in the closet but they I mean, are, they just, and to have someone to talk to who fully understands it I've got one friend Ryan and he, he had a, a dog for many years and every morning at 7 o'clock in the morning the dog would come up to the bedroom door and scratch on the door to go out but he got up let the dog out and then the dog died it went and then every morning after the death the dog would still come and scratch on the door oh. it would open the door and there's no dog there obviously and that continued until he got a new dog and when he got a oh. new dog the scratching on the door stopped that's so the same they, spirit so probably the same spirit has gone into the next incarnation yes yeah. so, so uh, um, say we want to say i want to uh, uh, have um or and d or somebody some alien we're aliens too uh come and appear before me and communicate with me is that possible yes of course it is yes all you have to do is ask okay uh, got, and be open I That's a, with, yeah. yeah i got together with the with the uh, uh group of eight higher conscious beings that i communicate with yeah. and they've, they've they've now learned to do that themselves and they have direct contact with this group of eight. Wow. So, so yes, what if I, want, if I want if I want to conjure up uh, Eric, could he, could I get him in here to sit on my lap? I'm, I'm sure you can. You would have to ask him. Just and ask. Then, just they, ask and be just open. Ask, just ask. Yeah. Ask him to. Uh, I'm going uh, to. Maybe, maybe show oh. you something or, or, oh, maybe- or move something. Yeah. Put something in the house, or but if you ask the question first and then be open to where the answer is coming from, it may not be a physical manifestation. Of uh, course, uh, I, mean, I know they can do that, but it may be a simple thing like you put something down and you go to pick it up, and Eric has moved it. That would yes. be the communication. But of course, yeah, open. he's done a lot of that. Oh, okay. So you already yeah. have that contact. Oh, gosh. Yeah. He's done crazy stuff. Right, so, right. Oh, that's good. I, it, it would be fun. To, oh, I'm wondering if you astral travel, is it easier for you to see your deceased loved ones when you're, when you're not in your body? Um, let me ask you a little question. Um, yes. Uh, I, I am able to see them if I am in my body and uh, I... Uh, I asked to see them. You could open the door to consciousness. And uh, very often I do that and I can see their faces. Their wow. faces come towards me and then they will give me some information. The group of eight ETs that I communicate with, I have the ability to ask to communicate with them. I will open my mind and uh, they will appear as pure conscious energy. And, uh, and then the first one, the second one, all eight would appear and the conscious energy has a golden color and it's fluid. And then each one that wants to, they'll stand in like a semicircle. Uh, the one that wants to speak to me will move forward. We will have telepathic communication and then move back. And then the next one would move forward. But we can do that with our deceased families and uh, friends. Uh, maybe not on that level possibly, but uh, all we have to do is try. Ask. Yeah. And then ask. Be open to ask. It. Yeah. Right, yeah. Anything. Any- We've got pretty much one minute left. So, is there anything else you'd like to share in clothing? In, in clothing? No, don't. This is not a strip bar. No. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything I, you'd I, like to I, say in closing? I'm just so pleased that you invited me on, on your show because um, uh, the message I have is important for it our is. spiritual de- our spiritual development of yes. who we are. Whether you believe in the ETs or not. Just the fact that you understand and you uh, are aware that our deceased loved ones, have, they are not dead. They are not deceased. They've no. moved on to that higher consciousness. And that's probably the key message. And then the one of the ETs is an extended message 
and and they're just using yes. because of my understanding of consciousness which they gave me they're then they're then using that to hopefully help uh, us as a species yes. to develop our spiritual side so yes. that's the key really uh, not everybody's interest, interested in the ets but that's the next level of consciousness that i've been able to develop to i think it's very important i think you're very courageous to share your story and to actually allow yourself to explore all of this instead of being freaked out and you know yeah, shutting I, yourself I off put, yeah i would agree with you there but uh, i think that uh, because i was inquisitive and i wanted to learn more then they just kept showing me more really and, and get me to this and there were many like me uh, yeah. some are speaking out i, I i've met a few, quite a few now uh, i wasn't aware of that because, probably because i wasn't looking for it uh, but there are many, and there are many now understanding. I know I did look uh, at one point, see how many spiritual churches were around where I live in Florida. And there was hundreds, hundreds of spiritual churches. Like the Unitarian churches. Church, yeah. And just when I was growing up, there was one spiritual church. And, yeah. you know, the people that went there were a bit funny. <laughs> yes, I know. Kind but of now bit. society's changed. It's yes. become acceptable to speak about our deceased family members and friends and uh, awesome. i was so surprised that uh, uh it's such a, a shift forward in our consciousness really yeah well thank you so much and we'll have to have you on the radio show too okay i'm sure we can arrange that sometime so uh all right i have enjoyed myself thank you very much Lisa. thank you very fascinating thank you. thank you so much bye bye bye